Hi friends. So in this video, we are going to discuss about the differences between conus medullaris and cauda equina. So for that, you need to understand what is cauda equina and what is conus medullaris. So for that, if you see the spinal cord, so this spinal cord, it is extending from the foramen magnum and it is not going to the level of the sacral cord or it is not going to the level of the sacral spine or sacrum. So this is somewhere ending at or above at the level of L1 or L2. So now what is happening is as the patient or as the child grows on, so at the time of birth, the spinal cord is exactly present up to the level of sacrum. So as the child increases or as grows, so the vertebral column will be growing faster than that of the spinal cord. So that is why the spinal cord is falling short of the vertebral column in growth. So this spinal cord is ending at the level of L1 or L2. Now let us see if we take the vertebral column like this. This vertebral column which is having the cervical vertebrae, so C1, C2, C3 and all. So then comes the thoracic vertebrae T1, T2 and all up to T12. From there then starts the lumbar vertebrae L1, L2, L3 and all. So now if you see the spinal cord, this spinal cord will be ending somewhere around L1 or L2. So this is where it is ending somewhere at the level of L1 or L2. So but the nerve roots that are coming from the spinal cord. So this nerve roots, the C1 nerve root that is coming from the spinal cord should obviously it should go below the C1. The C2 root it should go from C2. The C3 it should go from C3 vertebral column. In the same way T1 root that is coming it should go from T1 or below T1. The T2 root it should go from T2. The T3 root it should go from T3, T12 from T12. Now if you see the spinal cord is ending somewhere around L1 or L2. But what is happening to the L3 root? So this L3 root should come from the spinal cord and it should go away from L3 like this. L4 root, it should go down like this and come out from L3, L4 below the level of L4 vertebra. L5 it is coming still below like this. The sacral roots are coming like this again down and down. So now if you see the spinal cord, this spinal cord at the junction of R at near the ending, this appears like there are multiple roots coming down like this and exciting at different foramina or different naru or different vertebra. So these nerve roots on both sides, if you see, this collectively appears like that of a tail of the horse. So this tail of the horse is considered as cauda equina. So this is equina means horse. Cauda is the tail. So this spinal cord at the ending or at the uh, at below the level of L1 or L2, it appears like as if it is a tail of the horse. This is called as cauda equina. So what is conus medullaris then? So conus medullaris, when we call it as conus medullaris is, if the lesion is present somewhere at the ending of the spinal cord, somewhere at L1 or L2 vertebra, if the lesion or L1 or below the L1 or L2 vertebra, at the ending of the spinal cord, if there is a lesion, then that is called as conus medullaris. If the lesion is present in the lumbosacral roots, so then that lesion is called as cauda equina. So with this understanding, let us move into the differences between cauda equina and conus medullaris. Now if you see, in conus medullaris, the lesion is there at the point of ending of the spinal cord. So the lesion is there here. So this lesion is involving the spinal cord proper. This involving the spinal cord proper. This is also involving the nerve roots that are coming out from the spinal cord proper. So this is involving the spinal cord proper plus the nerve roots. Whereas in cauda equina, the lesion is there somewhere here in the lumbosacral nerve roots. So this is involving only the 
lumbosacral nerve roots so that is why as this conus medullaris is involved in spinal cord proper it is an umn lesion this is also involving the nerve roots this is an lmn lesion so conus medullaris is a mixture of umn plus lmn lesion upper motor neuron plus lower motor neuron lesion whereas cauda equina it is involving preferentially only the lumbosacral nerve roots so that is why this is a preferential lmn lesion so this is preferentially involving the lower motor neurons so this is an umn plus an lmn lesion whereas cauda equina is only a lmn lesion so now if you see the features as it is both an umn plus lmn lesion here the deep tendon reflexes will be exaggerated the deep tendon reflexes will be exaggerated whereas they are absent in cauda equina the deep tendon reflexes are absent in cauda equina below the level of the lesion then the plantar response it is extensor in conus medullaris it is flexor in cauda equina that is babinski is positive here babinski sign is positive here it is negative here it is negative then going to the sensory features symmetry of the lesion the symmetry of the lesion so now if you see here in conus medullaris it is the spinal cord proper that is involved in the lesion so if the spinal cord is involved the lesion or the problem or the clinical manifestations will usually be present on both sides of the lesion so symmetry is seen in patients with conus medullaris that is the clinical manifestations are equally affecting both the limbs it is present in both right and the left limbs whereas in patients with cauda equina it is asymmetrical unilateral usually unilateral whereas here it is symmetrical and bilateral pain is minimal in patients with conus medullaris whereas pain is a prominent feature in patients with cauda equina as it is involving the nerve roots so more the number of nerve roots are involved more is the pain the pain is more in cauda equina it is radiating along the nerve roots so pain is a prominent feature in cauda equina which is not or it is a minimal or a simple feature in conus medullaris then coming to the bladder and bowel involvement bowel and bladder involvement this is in fact seen in both it is present here it is present here but if you see as the spinal cord proper is involved in conus medullaris bowel and bladder is very early it is the bowel and bladder involvement is very early in conus medullaris even though the bowel and bladder is involved here it is a late manifestation in cauda equina it is a late manifestation in cauda equina so for remembering sake cauda equina or cauda equina syndrome is asymmetrical areflexic atonic paralysis below the level of lesion see as it is an element type of lesion the reflexes are absent as it is an element type of lesion tone is the tone is lost or tone is decreased as it is involving only the nerve roots symmetry is not there it is preferentially present on only one side of the lesion where the nerve roots are involved so this is a glance about the differences between cauda equina syndrome and conus medullaris syndrome so thank you for watching for more videos you can subscribe to my channel conceptual medicine by dr pratap bindu thank you